Hi there, Matt Filio working on this 24 by 30 acrylic portrait of the 30 people. <laughs> 30 people. I had to think for a moment. How many was that again? Yeah, 30 people in one portrait. It's crazy. But uh, I'm going to be working on skin tones today and blocking in values. So values and skin tones go together. Um, it's not just that you're trying to get the right color temperature, you know, for a Caucasian or uh, African-American or whatever the ethnicity is, it actually has to do more with the value structure and getting those correct values in the correct places. So when we look at the reference photo here, we're really trying to block in those specific shapes that we can see on their faces. The shapes that are created by the values, that's what we're going for. And that's what I'm going to be showing you here today in this painting. So, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, I ask a blessing on this painting. Help me to be able to paint this well, to capture the likeness as well. I can't do it by myself. I need your grace, your strength, your wisdom. So guide me in this process. Bless the students watching, and I pray you'd encourage them in their own portrait painting. I pray this video would be helpful and beneficial for them. In Jesus name amen all right so we're going to zoom in and we're just going to start from left to right we're gonna we've already got some of the structure in place but we're gonna do more so let's start with this girl right here and work our way down and I'm sorry about the camera movement all right we've got it framed in here and I'm going to add some darker tonal values to the bottom part of her face. Let's start with raw umber dark. So raw umber dark, you can see this mixture on the palette and I mix it with matte medium. So of course we're using the glazing technique. Raw sienna and alizarin crimson. Raw umber dark, raw sienna and alizarin crimson is what we're mixing here. And it makes a really nice flush tone. But we're really, again, just trying to block in these value shapes. And that's very, very important. All right, so the lower part of her face is darker than the upper part. And that's what we're trying to portray here. Let's shift this, um, let's just move this down a little bit, this drafting table. I'm getting a bit of glare. I was just working on a project prior to this where I had to have the table flat. And so I forgot to kind of adjust it for this painting again. So now we have less glare. I can see what I'm doing actually. All right. So again, I'm just adding some shading here. And I'm using this round brush because it allows me quite a bit of precision as far as where I'm going to put these glazes. So again, I'm getting the lower part of her face darker because it's the upper part that's receiving most of the light. Now, when you're seeing this little video here, you know, where I'm working for maybe 10 minutes or so, nothing's going to look that amazing. It's just building up glaze after glaze after glaze layer after layer after layer, being patient with the process, and then it will all come together at the end. So I know that I don't have to get it right in the first layer. Instead of moving my way across from left to right and just working on all these people a little bit at a time, and then eventually we'll be able to capture their likenesses. I'm going to darken that one eye. It's bothering me that one eye is dark and the other eye isn't. And we do need to refine that a little bit. Um, yeah, we're going to just continue adding more of these layers. So some of the skin tones are different. Like for example, that baby has cooler skin tones. So we need to use more of a raw umber dark. And you would think that a darker color on my palette like this would be for darker skin tones, but actually that's not the case. In most instances for the mid-tones, you're going to get more of a Caucasian skin tone um, using a less chromatically intense color. 
If you're doing some somebody with a darker ethnic skin tone, maybe burnt sienna, raw sienna would come into play more. But uh, you want something a little cooler, so we can also add a bit of ultramarine blue to this as well, right? And and tone it down even more. And then that's what we're going to use then for this baby here. But we have to make sure the glaze is overall pretty faint. And we can just get in these uh, cooler skin tones. We might add a little bit of alizarin crimson to that as well. But uh, we want the cooler skin tone with this glaze of raw or dark and ultramarine blue. It seems like many of these people have a slightly different skin tone. Each one's a little different. Now as I'm working on this boy here, he's got a richer skin tone, so we're going to add this glaze that I just mixed up with the raw umber dark, blizzard and crimson, and raw sienna. Let's put that under his neck area, doing some curvilinear brush strokes to kind of smooth it out. And we're going to just sculpt the form of the side of his face by getting some shadows in. Strong shadow under the nose. And just try to smooth this out as best we can. But eventually it's going to be getting a little more opaque, so I'm not too concerned about it being super, super smooth. put a little more shading on the lips and kind of let them connect with these shadows on the side. And so that's part of the structure is to just build up some shading on his face and uh, little by little that's how it happens. Now the guy in the back he's got a little more of a ruddy complexion. We're going to add a little bit of pyro orange to this mix and just kind of take whatever is on my brush right now. And then we got this slightly more pinkish tone for this guy in the back, and let me just move the camera over there. I guess I, before I do that, I, yeah, I don't wanna omit the guy back here. He has a little more of a yellowish skin tone. We'll just add a little yellow, which in this case would be raw sienna. And we just kind of block this in on his face in the back. And we're developing some of these other skin tones. neck can get a little darker as well and that little eyebrow ridge too. Alright now I'll wipe off my brush let's go to that more pinkish color where we had some pyro orange mixed in. You can see the difference between this skin tone here that has more raw sienna and this one here that has more pyro red orange. That's that color. It's actually called pyro orange. If you purchase it from Nova Color, which you can purchase that using my affiliate link, and I get a little um, commission off of the sale, but it doesn't change your price. But um, Pyro Orange is a beautiful, vibrant color, and it's actually called yeah, Organic Pyro Orange. But I call it Organic Pyro Red Orange because it is actually kind of a red orange color. It's not really the color of a orange fruit. It's definitely got more of a reddish tint to it. Put a little of that color in there, just make it slightly more pink. Now we're going to, let's see, add some glazes to this young lady's face down here and just add a bit of pink to that. So with some pyro orange, we'll just kind of mix that up. <clears throat> Actually, almost straight pyro orange because I just want to add a little bit of pink to her face. We have to make sure the glaze is pretty transparent. And we make it transparent by adding more of this clear acrylic matte medium, which is basically paint without the pigment. It's just the 
polymer resin binder that's used to create the film of kind of this plastic-like material which we call latex or acrylic. But uh, it's milky white when it's wet, it dries crystal clear to a flat finish and it works really well for doing the glazing technique. Alright, now we're going to continue on. Going to add some add some raw sienna to this mix here and a little glaze up on top. We're gonna add some shading to this young man here. Work on that. Let's see that's just a nice skin tone. You have that girl in the background, she can have kind of a cooler skin tone, so we add a little bit of ultramarine blue to it, plus some alizarin crimson, and she's got paler skin, and the paler the skin, the basically the less chromatically intense the color will be, so you want to add some cooler tones to really get that pale skin rendered properly. some glazes over here to this man and this man. Probably should add a little more to the baby first though, huh? Let's add, let's add a tiny bit of Indian yellow here to this glaze. I just feel like it should be a bit warmer in tone. In, Indian yellow is over here. It's this nice vibrant color. And uh, I just feel he needs a little more of that for his cheek area. Pretty soon we'll need to also get in some of the color for the hair and Indian yellow and raw or dark will work well for that. Let's just block in a little bit of the hair color, a little bit of this yellow. All right. And then I'll finish up with this man right here and we'll call it good for this session. I'm going to take more of this uh, pyro orange, this uh, raw sienna raw or dark pyro orange mix. And uh, we're just going to also add a little bit of the Indian yellow here and just warm that up a bit and we're going to add that kind of all over his face. In fact, I'm going to need to use a flat brush just to kind of smooth that out a little more. You can see that really rough glaze there. But you just smooth it right out. And we're just kind of adding a tonality to his entire face just to make it a little more yellowish. But uh, we'll add some other tones, some pinkish tints to the cheeks and really uh, work it all out together nicely. Okay. All right, so I think I'm going to stop off right here for the day. And I uh, want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Again, you're not going to see a lot happen in about 10 minutes with a live tutorial like I'm doing right now. Well, it's not live, I mean real-time tutorial. Not gonna see a lot happening, but just these little incremental shifts. And I just wanna you know, share the process with you here. Uh, if you find this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. You can uh, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Go to realisticacrylic.com and I have several video tutorials there for you, most of which are for free. And uh, <laughs> I'm recording this video uh, kind of late at night here so that's why I look like I'm a little sleepy because I am but I just had to get a bit of painting in tonight on this particular project and now I feel like I can go to bed <laughs> anyway hope you enjoyed this video 
Um, look forward to seeing you in the next one. God bless, and we'll talk to you soon.